Hey there everybody, got another build for you here. An experimental guitar this time. This one is the X4. Made this thing about uh, six months ago and at the time it incorporated more or less all my preferred features in a guitar. And so it's got things like uh, no head design, it's got a trapezoid type neck profile to it. Let's see if I can get a better light here. And it's got a trapezoid type neck profile to it. It's got a minimalist body, leg bar for your uh, leg cutout, uh, counterweight for balance, and uh, onboard EQ. Uh, some of my criteria for preferred designs have changed since then. They're constantly evolving, but this is pretty close to... And only a few things have changed since then. So, let's see. On to the details about this puppy. Uh, the neck is maple with a rosewood fretboard. 24 frets, 25 and half inch scale length, and 12 inch radius. Just another one of these eBay necks I get. Uh, I removed the headstock and I added a hanger bracket so that you can hang it up on a peg or a nail or something. It, like I said, it has the thin trapezoid neck profile. The sucker is only 20 millimeters tall or thick from the bottom of the spine to the top edge of the fingerboard, the entire length of the neck. And the fretboard edges have been rolled, of course. Uh, yeah, you can see there, nice and rolled. And I also added a zero fret to it to go with the, uh, the no head nut. They require zero fret. Uh, the body is made out of plywood. You can see right there. And uh, the bars on it and the counterweight are made out of pine. Uh, the bridge is a Steinberger type. It's actually a Overlord of Music brand. They're on eBay. They're relatively inexpensive. I think uh, they're going for about $40 right now. It's uh, really a, a great design. It's a little on the heavy side, but um, it's a double locking. It's got locks at the saddles and locks at the nut. Get out of my own shadow here. And it's also lockable. It's got a, a little lever right there that actually will lock it into a hardtail position so that you can lock the trim, tune it up, then turn that knob right there to adjust the trim spring so that it's in float position and then unlock it we're ready to go the things are dream to tune up you can do the same thing with a with a fender strat type trim or floyd rose but you gotta you know open up the back and play with the screws and need a phillips head stuff like that and there's no little lever to to lock it for you you've gotta block it off your yourself somehow uh, let's see. So yeah, that's the bridge. It's a really nice unit. Really, really nice unit. Being no head, it's got excellent, excellent balance. There's no neck dive on this thing. Um, the nut is the matching Steinberger type. It actually it has locking allens back there. You can't really see. It's kind of dark. But yeah, there's locking allens in the end of it, plus there's Floyd Rose style locks on the top as well. So the strings are definitely secure in there. One little thing you'll notice here, I'm running Birdie Ball Extra Slinkies, which are eights. 
and I actually had some issues with string buzz because these slots here were too wide for the very narrow strings I run. So a little bit of shim aluminum, this thing won't quite focus, but yeah, you just take a little, a little piece of soda can in the right place at the right time does wonders on a guitar sometimes. And yeah, that eliminates that. If that was an actual source of, of nut buzz. First time I'd ever seen that. Um, the electronics on it, it's got a bridge humbucker only. Um, basically, there's the old school approach to making sound based on multiple pickups and tones and volumes and tube amps and stuff like that. And then the more new school approach where... You know, just give me a bridge humbucker and a bunch of pedals and a clean channel and a chip amp is fine with me, that kind of thing. So this is this is more of a new school setup. You're going to be playing on the bridge all the time at full volume with the tone all the way up, so you don't really need a neck pickup. It's got the uh, depth pick guard to ensure shallow picking so that you can... Make sure that, you know, if you pick shallow, you pick fast. You can't pick fast if you pick deep, too deep. So this ensures shallow picking for faster picking, for fast picking. Um, let's see. Yeah, the electronics, once it comes off the humbucker, it then goes up here to the on-off switch, which can also work as a kill switch. And at first I wired that thing to simply be in line in the positive side of the of the signal. But if you turned it off, then that left a, a hot wire hanging out in midair, which acted as an antenna. So I rewired it, so now what it does is when you switch it off, it actually grounds hot, which totally kills the sound and ensures you get no feedback, no 60 cycle, no nothing. And then once it goes from there, it goes down to the equalizer, and EQ is mounted on board with a little battery on the back, and you just, oops, and just turn it on just like that, and you see the little red light, it gives you seven bands plus a level control, which is nice. Level sort of works like a volume, but it won't turn the thing all the way down. Um, and then the output jack for the EQ is actually the, uh, the output jack for the guitar. Um, let's see, other features on it, it's got the dual strap locks, like all of my builds do. There's one back there, and the other one is back here. And, uh, it's got the leg bar. The uh, cutout, the equivalent of the leg cutout here, is uh, actually positioned at the bridge instead of like at the middle pickup position, like on most guitars. Uh, the reason for that, get that spec sheet out of my way. The reason for that is um, that puts that puts the the bridge and such. If you're going to do semi-palm muting with your right hand, you're going to be resting your right hand right here, just below the saddles, and picking right here. So what that does is that puts that closer to the center of your body by shifting the entire guitar to your left, that direction, which would be to the player's left. Which puts it more where your right hand is when you're doing that kind of playing. Um, let's see, the counterweight and the counterweight bar are there in order to give the thing neutral balance so that it, it sits on your leg at a 30 degree angle and it hangs off your shoulder at a 30 degree angle for playing. The weight on the back side of the bar also helps tilt it slightly or do a tendency to tilt slightly with the so the top of the guitar tilts towards you a little bit so that you can just barely look over the edge and actually see the fretboard. Um, 
Let's see what else. The pickup on it is direct mounted. Springs, the thing bouncing up and down, that actually could act as a damper on vibrations of the guitar. And if the thing is bouncing up at the same time that the string is bouncing up, then that's less relative motion between the string and the pickup, which means that it doesn't get as much signal from the string, basically. It doesn't perturb the magnetic field as much. Um, let's see. Now, the finish on this thing is Kita Wood dye. It's mostly red with a little bit of blue and just a touch of black in order to uh, come up with a burgundy kind of a color here. Give you a shot of the back of the neck and the body. Yeah, the, the plywood is actually pretty interesting looking. It's almost flamed. Now, the, the bars are added later in order to sort out the ergonomics of the guitar. And I didn't have any of the original stain color mixed up, and I wasn't able to reproduce it exactly, but I was still able to get a decent enough burgundy for it. And the finish, um, the clear coat is clear lacquer. Getting kind of tangled up here. There we go. All right, yeah. Yeah, it's got clear lacquer finish. And the fretboard on it is actually lacquered as well, as you can see here. And I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I mean, it's like, you know, it always looks great. And it always looks like it's just been oiled. And it's not sticky. It's really quite slick and fast. So it's not an issue at all, really. And let's see. Cost-wise, I think I've got about $150 into this guitar. And as I said, a few of my design criteria have changed since I built this about six months ago. I'm planning to do a couple of mods to it. I'm going to lose the counterweight bar and the counterweight. And I'm going to lose the leg bar. And I'm going to go to a twin V-bar type design similar to this guitar right here. Which is the X6. Or this guitar here. The Ergo 12, or this one that I just finished a day or two ago. This is the fully completed X5, which I'll be doing a video of here in a bit. But yeah, this this twin bar works even better than the counterweights that you see here on the X4. And the really radical counterweight, if I can get this thing to go. This is the X. This is guitar number three, and this thing has the most radical of all the counterweights. This guitar is five feet long with a very large counterweight on it. But that's for another video. As far as this one goes, yeah, this is going away, this is going away. I'm also losing EQ. It's better to just put it at the, at the beginning of the pedal chain. And just use, basically use the guitar as a simple input device. You know, no toe controls, no volume, no anything. Just, uh, you know, my, now, now my preferred setup is like, you know, a humbucker, an on-off switch so that you can, you can set it down without having it feedback, and then also a momentary kill switch for the, the kill effect, kill switch effect. And so this is going away, this is going away, this is going away, and that's going away, and it's going to get a pair of bars like this thing. And those are the mods that I'm planning for. And that's pretty much it for this guitar. So yeah, that's the X4. Now, this is only one of two experimental guitars that I actually like. Completed them all the way and kept them. Uh, this is one, and guitar number three here, this huge monster, is the other one. And all the rest I 
they were like the X5 before I finished it. I'd get part way through, I'd prove my point or disprove it, and then I'd just butcher it for parts for the next build. So, But yeah, I decided to keep this one. It was pretty cool, and so I went ahead and stained it and all the rest of that stuff. Put the whammy on it, so to speak, and I'm pleased. It's, it's nice. I've sort of been debating leaving it in this state, but I'm not trying to run a museum here, so... But anyway, that's the X4. Everybody have a good one. See you all later.